Solid Edge with ST4 provides powerful tools for defining and building structural frames. In order to take a look at that, I'm going to change our display configuration to that of the uh, frame configuration, which shows you that the undercarriage of the Iron Eagle uh, actually does have some framework in it. And so let's take a look at how we can actually do this very easily in Solid Edge ST4. I'm going to change the display configuration now to build frame where you'll see that we've already got some sketches started as well as a sheet metal part that needs to be supported by uh, some frameworks. Now in order to do that I'm going to simply open up a subassembly that way we can work directly in the subassembly and then you'll notice under the tools tab we actually have the frame design uh, uh, environment that we can go into. Now once we're in there uh, the frames are basically supported or guided by sketches. So what we want to do is show you how we can use some of these sketching tools. Now I'm going to just use the line segment command and you notice that we get a triad so we can lock into a plane or an axis but we also have shortcut tools that we can use, shortcut um, uh, keys that we can use uh, to maybe offset or to lock to uh, global planes or an axis or whatever. So what I'm going to use is the O key to do an offset from this end point. And then when I get to that point, I'm going to go ahead and go uh, uh, a minus 218 millimeters. And you'll notice it backs me up. And then what I want to do is I want to lock in uh, to the uh, Z axis so that I can come up to the bottom of this sheet metal part and then I can use the z-axis to lock in to go across and just simply pick the line segment to the uh, for my endpoint and then one more time I can lock in and just bring it down to meet the other line segments. So very quickly we can draw sketches in 3D uh, using some of these uh, key in options. Now you'll see that that's going to give us some support for this sheet metal part. So the next thing that we'd want to do is go into the frame command itself. Now the neat thing about building frames in Solid Edge is they're associated back to their cross section. So if that cross section changes, the frame will update. We also support frame options such as mitered quarter, butt one, butt two, uh, automatic frame component positioning, and several other options that our users may be interested in. So let's go ahead and start building a frame. The first one that I'm going to do is if you know if you want to browse in your system for for a frame size, you can do that. But once you use them, it adds them to your it adds them to your pull down menu. And here I'm going to use the 50 by 50, and then I'm simply going to identify the three uh, main segments of our frame. And with the right mouse button click, it will actually generate those frames very quickly. Now depending on how that cross section section is defined and where the zero point is. In this case it was the zero point for the cross section was at the very center of that cross section and so that's why it places it on the um, on the uh, sketch as shown. What we want to do then is go ahead and create the cross member pieces and for that I'm going to go ahead and select the 20 by 20. And then in this case we're going to select all five of these remaining uh, sketches so those are five sketches and it, what it will do is it will go out and it will generate very quickly again those uh, frames uh, and apply them to those sketches. Now you'll notice that it automatically trims the frames back when it meets another frame and that's one of the advantages of using our frames. The other thing you'll notice is this particular frame was created where the zero point was on the lower left corner. Well, we do have options uh, in, in Quick Bar where we can actually make a change to those cross sections. So if I click on Modify Cross Sections, you'll notice that it highlights all five of those uh, cross sections. But if I only want to modify one at a time or two at a time, I can simply deselect uh, or hit the red X to deselect them. And then in this case, I just want to select these two cross sections and I want to make a change to those. Now when I do that, we also supply what we call define handle points, which gives you different options uh, to place the handle point or the, z the zero point for that cross section. So if I zoom up real close, you'll notice that it's locked into the lower left corner. You'll notice it gives us nine, uh, nine other locations that we can lock into. So if I pick the center point, notice how the cross section updates its position to that sketch very quickly 
and locked into the center of it. So you'll notice now that these two cross sections have been updated. So what we want to do is go ahead and make a change on the back three of these. So I'm going to click on the cross section again, deselect. Now this time what I want to do is I want to move these two uh, 20 by 20s to the center of the 50 by 50 square. So we'll go ahead and accept those two. And in the same way we did the first two, I'm going to pick the center. And it will actually move both of those uh, frames to the center of the, the larger frame. Now the only other thing I need to do is since I move them, then I need to come back and move the third and final one. So basically I will just select it and then I can uh, accept it. And in this case, all I want to do is slide it over to the center. So when I pick that, you'll notice that it automatically lines itself up. Now some of the other cool things to think about uh, that, that you'll see with the frame design is what we talked about in the frame options is the option to apply corner treatments. Here you see we've got miter cornered. If I change that to uh, a but one and click on the OK, you'll notice how the shorter or the vertical bars go up and the, and the horizontal one is in between those. If I change that to the but two option, you'll notice how the vertical, the, uh, excuse me, the horizontal one will be the longer part and the short ones will uh, will actually trim themselves back. So depending on what kind of uh, corners you want, you can achieve those very quickly. I'll just go ahead and stick with the miter corners. And again, creating uh, frames is very, very quick and easy. Uh, as you can see that the options that we're using here, we're able to, to create them uh, very fast. Now once your frames are completed, and in this case for this particular Iron Eagle, what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to do a hide all uh, components and I'm going to hide some sketches. And I'm going to hide all paths. And then I'm going to just basically turn off the sheet metal component for the time being. One thing that we've added new in ST4 is the capability to run a beam simulation or, a, or a, an analysis, a beam analysis uh, in the frame environment. So what I'm going to do is just run a quick study just to show you how that works. So I'm going to create a study. The mesh type is a beam. And then I'm simply going to fence select the frames that we've just created. You're going to notice that the beams are created very quickly. Once those are defined, You'll notice that our study has already been activated. It shows that our geometry uh, it has uh, been added. And you'll see the different frames. So what we can do is we can go ahead and apply a force. Now we allow you to apply a force to a node or to a curve. And in this case, let's just put a, a force on the, uh, on the uh, front uh, main bar of the mower. And then what I'll do is I'll apply a fixed constraint also to the curve. And I'll just pick uh, these back two curves here. Very quickly, we can run a mesh. And just in a matter of seconds, it will mesh this with uh, 1D elements. And then when that's satisfied, we can go ahead and run the solve. And we can take a look at our results. So in ST4, we've added uh, beam analysis so that users can actually take their structural frames and uh, run a quick analysis on them just to make sure they're going to uh, withstand uh, anything that, uh, that, that might occur when, uh, in this case, uh, using this Iron Eagle uh, mower. And here you can see that the frame is certainly going to withstand anything that, uh, that we'll run into with this particular mower. Now when you're done with that particular uh, analysis, one other thing that we want to take a look at in this particular demonstration is the, um, is the weldment environment. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and change this to a, um, and mark this assembly as a weldment assembly. And what that does is it, it provides us features to create weldments between our components here. You notice that we support fillet weld, groove weld, stitch weld, and we can even label our weld. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the fillet weld option. And when any, any time that you select an option, you also have, have several options where you can pick and choose, you know, different types of weld symbols and, uh, for the particular operation that you're using. 
But in this case, we're just going to go ahead and select these uh, two uh, cross members and then these two members that are attached to the 50 millimeter. And then simply by selecting those 50 millimeter, uh, 50 by 50 uh, square uh, uh, tubes, we can go ahead and preview, and you'll notice that it very quickly creates a weld uh, bead around uh, all locations where those uh, members touch the 50 by 50 uh, square tube. Now another case uh, is is if we have in the front here we have a situation where uh, these 50 by 50s meet this front crossbar and how do we handle a situation like that in this case we can use the groove weld command again uh, allows us to uh, apply any type of uh, groove weld options for uh, labeling and what we'll want to do is basically I'm going to change this actually to face select because we're going to actually create a weld bead between these three faces and the bottom face of our first tube and then I just simply tell it the uh, the outside profile and the inside profile and then of course I want to extend these and we give you an option to normal to base or extend to surface and I'm going to extend them all the way to the surface and then with a quick preview you'll notice that we can very quickly uh, create weld beads between these two faces now if I want to go back to the fillet weld command and just go to single face option I can pick this face and we will rotate it around and pick the opposite uh, face and then we'll pick the top face to create the fillet weld and very quickly we can add that fillet weld just to give it a little bit more strength now obviously I could run these two operations on the opposite side but another way to do that quickly is just to simply identify the fillet weld and the groove weld and just do a pattern and from the pattern quick bar gives us gives the user options I'm just going to use the parallel and I'm just going to pick the side and I'm going to say you know what pick up the midpoint of of this bar and very quickly it's going to uh, mirror those welds to the opposite side so I can get the job done uh, very quickly now again I talked uh, just a, a second about labeling so if I come and grab for example this weld bead you'll notice that it's going to allow me to uh, label it and and we can either label it using the PMI dimensioning here in the assembly environment or we can extract this information uh, in the draft environment so you know with solid edge uh, ST4 uh, users really do have the flexibility to define and create any number of structural frame styles and sizes in a in a streamlined workflow and then are able to take that same design into the weldment environment where they can apply weld beads to all the frame uh, connections and then of course you don't want to forget that we've added the beam analysis in ST4 so with that this uh, hopefully gives you a good overview of frames uh, beam analysis and the weldment environment.